Well, the kingdom is the supernatural realm. It's the realm of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but there are things in the kingdom that we want manifested in our life in this time, in this uh, place where we are. Uh, that's true for all of us. And God is taking you from where you are. He's taking you to a, another place through his revelation that he's revealing himself to you, uh, revealing a higher and higher uh, uh, understanding uh, of who he is. And that's true for all of us. And, and so we need to understand that God speaks out things uh, and then it may take a while for it to come to pass and we may have a part uh, in bringing it to pass, bringing forth what he has intended for us. You know, the Lord spoke to Sherry when she was uh, nine years old and told her to go into all the world. What did he say to you? It's Mark uh, chapter 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, but uh, in essence, she didn't go into the other nations until 40 years later. Yeah. So there's a process and she had to get prepared. Now he spoke it out in, uh, in uh, when she was nine years of age, but uh, 40 more years before she actually started moving in the international realm. Mm -hmm. And what I want you to know is that God is making you promises uh, that are for you today, but we have to go through a process in some cases uh, to, for those things to be manifested, for those to become reality in our life. Amen. Up until then, it's a promise. It's just a promise. But when, when we do what we're supposed to do and we go through the process that God has for us, it will become a reality. And that's the reason I call it a kingdom reality. It starts in the kingdom. It's something that he's promised us, something he's spoken to us, something that he has spoken uh, specifically to your heart or you may have seen it in the scriptures it may have become alive to you or you've received a word of prophecy all of those things uh, but they may take a process a time some time to to for them to be manifest in the realm in which we are living and so let's let's don't give up let's don't get frustrated mm -hmm. you know sometimes uh, people get uh, frustrated with the process uh, but let's just look at romans 8 uh, for example it uh, says that uh, he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according mm. to his purpose. And so you may have a calling on your life. God may have spoken to you. You may have received a word of prophecy and it hasn't come into reality, hasn't been manifested yet. And so that's what this message is about to, uh, today. How can you uh, bring it in from the kingdom, from the supernatural realm, bring it into the natural realm? And it's all of us. We all have promises that we're not yet walking in. And uh, God has so much for us, uh, hundreds and hundreds of promises, and, and we haven't received all of them, we haven't manifested all of them. So we need to be re realizing that he's calling us to a higher level, and let's, let's follow him, follow him by his spirit, because the process is through the spirit, it's by the spirit, uh, operating in your life. Amen. Now, I want to use as an example here, of uh, salvation uh, and uh, there is a salvation in which you're born again uh, and then you begin to see the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and and so there are some different aspects of it and I want to read uh, I want Sherry to read uh, Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 and we are probably all very familiar with this Amen. with Amen. these verses this is basically the Roman road to salvation. So read this. Okay. It says in verse nine, that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10. For with the heart, a person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth, he confesses resulting in salvation. Okay. So it's a process. You believe it in your heart and you speak it out. You confess it. And, and that's that's a real standard way of bringing things about. Amen. And maybe there's some things in uh, in your life that God has promised to you. You've received as a promise. 
and yet they haven't been manifested yet. Well, have you, are you believing in your heart? And have, are you be confessing? See, a lot of people read the scriptures, they read it, they find something, and they, and they say, well, okay, I've got it, that's me, that's who I am. And, and yet they never believe it in their heart. They never confess it uh, with their mouth. And now here's another uh, verses, two verses about a salvation. And, and I want to share to read these two uh, because it, it, it still it's talking about salvation, but it's giving us some more in-depth understanding of how to manifest things in our life. In mm -hmm. this case, it's how to manifest salvation in our life. Read these. Uh, Philippians 2 verses 12 and 13. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, both to desire and to work for his good pleasure. Okay. Hallelujah. So it's still talking about salvation, but it's talking about it from a little bit different perspective. See, we know over there in Romans 10, 9 and 10, we have to believe in our heart, confess it with our mouth. But here he's still talking about salvation. Mm -hmm. But he's saying, work it out. Work it out yourself, something you have to do. And then he says, God's working in you uh, to, to bring your salvation. Yeah, for so, his good pleasure. So let's just think about that. So here are a statement. This is a statement in Philippians, and it has two contradictory statements. One says, you work out your salvation. And the other one says, God is working inside of you, within you, uh, to bring about what he wants. And so it, here's you working, here's God working. And over in, uh, in, in Romans, it said all we had to do is believe, mm -hmm. <laughs> believe and confess. And, and uh, well, that is our work. <laughs> and, and, and so here it says, work out our salvation. And uh, then it says, well, God's working in you. And so you have to realize that God is going to need to work and do some things in you but then there are some things that you need to do. And now, this uh, statement is a good example of a paradox. A paradox contains two statements that are contradictory. One says, you've got to do something, and the other one says, God's got to do something. Uh, but it's, they really wind up at the same place. That's the way you get salvation. You've got to do something. God's got to do something with you, through you, by the Holy Spirit. So this is really giving us some perspective on how to bring things out of the supernatural realm into the natural realm. We can't just read it. We'll read a verse. Let's say mm -hmm. you see a verse. You, you've got a problem in your body or a problem in your relationship, and you, you find a scripture over there that's a promise to solution. It's a promised solution to the problem. And you read it and just think, okay, mentally, I'm going to accept that. Mm. I'm going to, I've read it and we've all read it. We've all read uh, from, from the Bible and, and there's a lot of mentally accepting it, but, but there's more to it here. We saw it in Romans. We have mm -hmm. to believe it and confess it with our mouth. Believe it in our heart. Now, how do you get it into your heart? Well, you can't just reach in there and, and pour it in. Well, the way to do it is just study the Bible, study the Word of God, and begin to confess it and believe it and confess it and confess it. You may have to confess it over and over. Mm -hmm. Sherry has told us how she has learned to hear the voice of the Lord, that she has spoken it over and over, over again. Over and over again. Well, what was that verse you used, Sherry? In John 10, it says, I am one of his sheep, and I hear his voice, and a strange voice I will not follow. Okay. And I said it over and over and over. I confessed it with my mouth over and over and over until there there came a time when I was ready to say, now, now, Lord, give me something to do. Give me some instructions. And that's when he began to do it. And I began to do what he told me to do. And that that built my confidence in that I was one of his sheep and I heard his voice and a strange voice I would not follow. And so it was okay. a process. Okay, it was a process. And the way she uh, did it was to confess it over and over and over again. And then it became a reality. Yes. That's what we're talking about. That's the purpose of this message tonight. How can you take a promise of God 
uh, and bring and it to reality. Bring it to reality. It, so it's in the supernatural realm, and we've got to bring it into the natural realm. We've got to bring it into where we are. And, and oh, basically, it's all all the same things. And uh, Sherry has another verse here. John 3, 3, which says, unless someone is born again, he or she cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay, so this is kingdom reality, bringing the supernatural realm into the natural realm, but we have to be born again. We saw how to be born again, believe in our heart, confess with our mouth. Well, another verse that I had started with earlier was God's going to work everything out. Mm -hmm. Every situation mm -hmm. that comes your way, he knows how to turn it around to your good. Hallelujah. But, Hallelujah. But you've got to do your part. He's got to do his part. You've got to allow him to do his part. And so everything is about us learning the kingdom, how to learn to operate mm -hmm. in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, we get frustrated. Yes. Uh, so any kind of negativity, if we're in the midst of a process and God is taking us to a higher level, and we get frustrated or we have any negativity. Well, all of that negativity was in there to begin with. God never put any negativity in any of, in any of us. And we have to deal with those issues. And so if we're dealing with fear or anxiety, we're the ones that have to deal with that. God never put it there. And so we have to, to deal with it. It's a part of the process. We have to overcome that. All of that stuff, all of the negative stuff has to come out, be manifested, and be put under the blood of Jesus so Amen. that it's Amen. no longer uh, harassing us. Hallelujah. Okay, so so we're talking about this example of, of salvation. Now, I want us to move on to, to let's look at God's perspective on things. God says some things, and, and uh, we, we think he's just like us. But, you know, Isaiah 55 says that he's not like us. He, he thinks his thoughts are higher, higher. than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. I want you to read Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. <laughs> okay. So just because God says something or thinks something, doesn't mean that we can just immediately interpret it and internalize it as being ours. And, and so we have to realize he's thinking about things in a different way. And I want to use a couple of examples here. Colossians, mm -hmm. from Colossians, he says we're complete in Christ. Mm -hmm. We are complete in Christ. Okay. Read Colossians 2.10. And in him you have been made complete. And he is the head over every ruler and every authority. Okay. Hallelujah. So right here, God is saying something about you that that is just mind blowing in the natural mind. It's beyond the natural mind. He says that we are complete in Christ. He only sees us complete and in Christ. Now, what's interesting, we have to go through a process. We're in the midst of a process. All our life is the midst of a process. But see, God never changes. He never changes how he thinks about you. He sees you complete. complete. And, and so today, let's say you're at this point and, and he says you're complete. And so let's say for the rest of your life, you just become evil and dark and do all of that. You're still complete. He still sees you as complete. But on the other hand, let's say you're here and, and then you really try to do what's good and what's right and walk in the light. And, and so your behavior, it just it, increases and you're a much better person and better Christian, <coughs> but you're still complete. And no matter what you do, you're complete in Christ. He can't see you any other way, but you have to realize you're in a process and God has said some things about you and we, we need to go through that process and he's going to show us by the spirit uh, how to go through that process. Now, I have another verse uh, here that I want Sherry to read. And, and the reason for this is just another example of God sees us complete. He sees us free from the curse, delivered from the curse. He sees us blessed, but maybe we're not walking in all of that yet. 
And so just because we have read it in the Bible doesn't mean that it all has become a reality to us yet. This message Mm -hmm. is about how to make the reality of what God has promised to us. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham would come to the Gentiles, that's us, so that we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Okay, so this is a promise. What is the promise? We're delivered from the curse and we're blessed. But what if you're not walking in all of this yet? And let me give you an example. If if, uh, you're Let's say your great grandparents went through some uh, problems, issues, maybe sexual immorality, or maybe uh, some sickness, or or uh, some uh, poverty, or and then it goes through your uh, your grandparents, and then it goes through your parents, and then it goes through you. But you've been delivered from the curse. Well, that's what the Bible says. But have you made it a reality in your life? Mm-hmm. And that's what we've got to do. It's one thing to just read it in the Bible. It's another thing to, for a preacher to tell you you've been delivered from the curse and that you're walking in the blessings. But you can look at your life and see, well, is that true? Are there the patterns in, in my mm-hmm. in my family <clears throat> where <clears throat> excuse me where all of the almost every generation there have been certain kinds of uh, evil things that have happened to them. Maybe that's a curse, those patterns. We look at those patterns. And so Jesus, yes, he did the fundamental work on the cross to deliver you from the curse, but are you delivered? There's some things you have to do, some things God has to do. And God has blessed you uh, by what Jesus did on the cross. He became a Amen. curse so that Amen. you could be blessed. But are you blessed in every area of your life? If you're not blessed in every area of your life, such as your relationships, as your inner peace, as your uh, uh, finances, Mm -hmm. uh, in your relationships, in your uh, peace of mind, in your in in all of these different areas, do are you blessed? And if if that's a part of the promises, but we've got to manifest it in our lives. And so there's some things we have to do, some things that God uh, has to do. So that's what, that's prophecy. I mean, that's the that's God's perspective on things. He speaks things out, and he's not going to change. <laughs> you are blessed. Amen. You're free Amen. from the curse. But now we've got to realize, oh, there's a process here. He's working all things together for the good. So every evil thing that comes your way, what's God going to do? He, he's going to reverse it. He's going to reverse it. He's going to turn it around. But that's a process. It's a process, and we have to we have to recognize that. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is that God speaks in prophecy. He, what he see, he breathes the the scriptures are breathed mm-hmm. by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So it's the breath of God that's brought forth the, all of the scriptures. Okay, and and those are prophecy. And so I want you to read this Romans four seventeen. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed, that is God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that do not exist. So when, Hallelujah. So when God gives you a promise, what is it? It's the end result. It doesn't tell you anything about how to get there. He may have called you. He may, you may have a calling on your life. Right. I, I know some of the people here. Uh, that you have a calling. As a matter of fact, right. we all have a calling on our life. Amen. All yeah. of us have a calling on our life. And, and but, but that doesn't tell you how to get there. And, and so there's a process. And, and that's what we're emphasizing tonight. How do we go through the process? And what and what God does, see, he, he calls the end. end. He, the end result. He speaks the end result. So his word, he's bringing forth the end result. And, and we're back here. And and he's going to say, well, you're going to grow up and you're going to, be going to become my minister and you're going to do these things. Well, this is the end result. And so we have to walk this thing out uh, till we get there. It may take us a while. 
And it takes the work of the Holy Spirit working hey, in our life. Amen. It takes amen. some other people operating in our life and uh, speaking, speaking into, into our, our lives. Into our life and teaching us. So all of this is a process. And, and so that's what God's word is. It, it is spoken by the Spirit of God. And it's a, it's a prophecy. Right. And so read this verse, Sherry. Okay, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God, that's you and I, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay. Hallelujah. So God has breathed these promises into existence. They're your end result. And yet we have to go through a process to get there. Now, God loves the process. Uh, uh, otherwise, he would just make you mature. He would just uh, make you the superhuman being beyond, uh, you know, just like Jesus. But no, it's a process. We're becoming like Jesus. Well, and I have a thought here, and that is the <laughs> Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm going to send you. I'm going to go back to the Father, and I'm going to send you another comforter. And he is going to bring you into all truth. And he's going to be your helper. He's going to be your uh, your teacher. And so it's Jesus left us the Holy Spirit to help us with this process from beginning to the end. The Holy Spirit is there to help us know what to do, what to say, how to move, where to go, and and and. I thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so it's this process we're talking about bringing a promise from the supernatural realm that we've either heard ourselves by the Spirit or the or we've read in the scriptures, it's become alive to us, or we've received a prophetic word. They're all similar. They're promises of God, though, and they have to be brought into reality, into manifestation, into the this realm in which we're living and walking and moving. Okay, so th then how do we bring these things into reality? They're, they're prophecies. Mm -hmm. uh, the word of God is all a prophecy. Right. Uh, it was breathed by the Holy Spirit. And, and that's what uh, the book of Revelation is. It, it's a prophecy. It's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so don't think, oh, it's a calendar of the end event. End mm -hmm. time events. Right. No. It's a prophecy of Jesus Christ. You read Revealing it. Jesus Christ to us. Okay, now, Revelation 1, verse 3. And this okay. is out of the Amplified Bible. Okay, we're going to read it from a couple of different versions mm -hmm. here. But it it's, it's basic principles. What to do with prophecies. What are we going to do when we have a prophecy or a promise that God has promised us something how do we make it manifest in our life? Maybe he has a call on your life. Uh, and yes, he does. And so how do we bring that into reality? Mm -hmm. and, and so we've got a, a couple of uh, translations. I want to look at this verse. Revelation 1, verse 3, Sherry. This is how the Amplified. <clears throat> Blessed, happy, prosperous, and one to be admired is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and who keep the things which are written in 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 it heeding heeding them taking them to heart for the time of fulfillment the time of manifestation the time of completion is near near okay what all this hallelujah is? we've got to keep it there's some things we have to do we have to listen to the word. We have to speak the word. We have to heed the word. We have to keep it in our hearts. Keep it in our heart. Apply it. Well, that's true with any prophecy. Uh, and that was in Revelation 1 verse 3. It's talking about those prophecies in the book of Revelation. But they could have been applied to any promise. I mean. Any scripture. Now. Uh, you want me to read out of the passion? Now I'm going to. Um, how Sherry read it out of the Passion Translation, but there's one phrase. It's the very last phrase in this that is an incredible, an incredible statement. I want you to listen to it. 
It's in particular, it's the last phrase of this verse. A joyous blessing rests upon the one who reads this message and upon those who hear and embrace the words of this prophecy for the appointed time is in your hands. Woo -hoo -hoo, wow. We think, it's Hallelujah. All, we think it's all about God. We've got a word of prophecy and it's all about God. He'll just be sovereign. He'll do it when he wants to. But that verse, that verse, and we've got to embrace them. We've got to embrace when God gives us a promise. We have a promise. We've heard a prophecy. All of the prophecies, we've got to embrace them, believe them, keep them, do them, uh, act on mm, it. Understand them. And who, in whose hand is the appointed time? Oh, it says it's in your hands. Oh, you're responsible. Yes, yes, for hallelujah. When your prophecy comes to pass. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Let me say that again. You mm, are responsible mm, mm. for when the prophecy comes to pass in your life. <clears throat> wow, so wow. many people just think, well, I have a prophecy. I'll oh, it'll happen when it happens. When it happens. And uh, I'll just set it over here on the shelf and I'll decide whether the prophet's a true prophet or a false prophet but about when it, whether or not it comes to pass. No, that's, a, that's incredibly wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that tells us, no, you, you are the one responsible for bringing into reality the promises. Hallelujah. And you might say, well, I just don't have any promises. Have, have you followed the process? There's a process. Mm -hmm. The Bible clearly has a process. It's not just, so oh, I read it. It's a promise for me. And so it's going to happen when God wants it to happen. No, this verse said, the appointed time is in your hands. Oh, hallelujah. You, you've got to do something Woo! about it. You can make it happen today, or you can let it out there and let it happen in 10 years. Yeah, it's yeah. You, you are the one that determines when a promise comes to pass. You are oh, by what you believe. By what, see, if you want it to come to pass, you need to be confessing it over and over and over again. And you moving know, toward it. Moving, to, applying it, believing it, embracing it. There are things that we need to do that we can bring the promise, whatever promise it Hallelujah. is. Maybe it's your calling. Oh, maybe it's what God has told you to do. Oh, and you might think, well, I'll just wait and see when it happens. No, it's all about, it's in your hand. You do something about it. You are the one that needs to be operating to bring it into reality now. You, you don't oh, have to yeah. just say, oh, oh yeah. this, this may happen out there and God's sovereign and he'll, uh, he'll cause it to happen when, when he wants it to happen. No, it's in your hand. Hallelujah. You, you, it can be manifested when you're ready for it to be manifested. Mm, 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 but you've mm. got to go through the process by the spirit of, of God, God. Through Amen. the spirit of Amen. God. So you'll have to cooperate. You'll have to be a partner with the spirit of God. Let him show you how to bring it to pass, when to bring it to pass. Maybe you're not quite there. Maybe you've got a calling on your life. Maybe mm -hmm. you've been called to be a prophet and you might think, oh, uh, someday I will be, it may be, well, no, it, it's, you need to be working toward it. You need to be confessing it. <clears throat> you need to be embracing it, walking in it, Amen. doing it. How oh, hallelujah. 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 Things hallelujah. are in your hand. You have things to do. God has things to do. God is not slack. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say this. Prosperity is in your hands. Yes. Healing is in your hands. Yes. Encouragement. Is in your hands. Restoration. Restoration of is in your hands. Restoration of relationships. Hallelujah. Healing, all of it's in your hand. Woo! Woo! You. Yeah, it's <laughs> you. It's it's uh he told Joshua, <laughs> he said, Whatsoever you do, it will prosper. You put your hand to when you put whatever you put your hand to, it's gonna prosper. Hallelujah. And so if, if if you've been prophesied over and it says that you're gonna you're gonna give words of knowledge and and you're gonna prophesy to people, uh, then believe in your heart 
and begin to move in that, begin to get up and mobilize. And I believe that's what God is doing for his whole body right now. He's mobilizing his troops uh, in the name of Jesus. And I believe that this is part of it, that the appointed time is in your hands. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Not, when do you want to prosper? It's, I want to prosper today. It's hallelujah. not dependent on somebody else. Nobody can keep your promise from happening Amen. except you. Hallelujah. You are the one in charge of your, your promise promises happening. But you've got to be hallelujah. led by the Spirit. If you want to manifest them. This is about manifesting promises tonight. Why Making your, them a reality. Why haven't your promises been manifested? It's up to you. You can't blame it on somebody else. Oh, I'll blame it on my spouse. No, I'll blame it on my children. Oh, I'll blame it on my parents. No, it's all about you and you and your relationship with the Lord. I mean, are you I mean, hearing his voice? Are you being led by the spirit? Are you embracing the promises? Are you applying them? Are you standing them on, on them? Are you confessing them? Do you believe with your heart? It's all about you and what you're doing with the promises hallelujah <clears throat> hallelujah hallelujah and, and i want to end with this uh, verse and say that all of the word of god is prophecy amen and so how are we going to mm -hmm. get any mm -hmm. of the promises any it's all prophecy we have to apply the same things that john the beloved wrote in revelation 1 3 We've got to believe it. We've got to embrace it. We've got to do all of those things. We've got a part. God has a part. And God is waiting on you. Don't think, oh, I'm waiting on God. No, this is not about you waiting on God. You start doing what God has called you to do. Amen. What he tells you to do about a promise, whether it's a promise. Maybe it's about a broken relationship uh, that you need to mend or a relationship with your children or your spouse or your uh, siblings or your parents that, that you need to mend. You, you can't just say, oh, God may fix it some point in time. No, it's all about you. How to bring the, what's in the supernatural realm, bring it into reality, manifest it in the realm in which you walk. Hallelujah. That's hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this verse says it's all the whole word of God is prophecy. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. And so we have the prophetic word made more sure, to which you do well to pay attention to as a lamp shining in the darkness until the dawn of the day and the morning star arises in your hearts. But know this first of all, that no prophecy of the scripture becomes a matter of someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human being or human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Hallelujah. So all scripture is prophecy. All scripture. It was breathed by the Holy Spirit. And those that wrote it received it and wrote it down. Okay. Hallelujah. So this is an important key. So every scripture, then you can approach it as if it's, a, as if it's prophecy, prophecy written to you and you can mm. manifest mm. it. You can bring it out of the supernatural realm into the natural. Hallelujah. Realm. Now, it, it's, we have to be led by the spirit of God in this. What is he promising you? What does he want you to do in this situation? It's a very simple concept we're talking about tonight. There are things that we need to do when we see a promise prophesied. We hear a promise prophesied to us. We see it in the scriptures. It becomes alive to us. Or we hear the word of God spoken to us by the spirit himself. Or somebody gives us a mm -hmm. prophetic word. Any of these things, we have a role, a responsibility to bring it to pass. And we can have, we can Get involved with it and bring it to pass mm -hmm. now. Now. Or we can just wait until we get to heaven and never have it manifested. A lot of people mm -hmm. have prophetic words that will never be manifested in their life because they're just depending upon uh, it to come pass by itself. 
and then it won't, it won't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've read a lot of things in the scriptures that have not yet been made real, become a reality in your life. But any of those things, you can take them, treat them as a prophecy Amen. And, and, and embrace it and begin to confess and act on it and do whatever you need to do, whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. And it will come, a re, it will become a reality in your life. Thank Hallelujah. you so much Hallelujah. for being Hallelujah. here tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to turn it over to Sherry. I know that every one of us uh, in this group, we are desiring to for the kingdom of God to become a reality in our lives. And the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit plays a, a incredible and critical role in our lives. And the closer we get to the Holy, Holy Spirit, the more we pray in the Spirit, the more we are led by the Spirit, then the quicker kingdom is going to be a reality in our lives. That the world out there is says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's all we see. And, and we see our prosperity and we see our healing. You know, and there is there is some uh, I just sense in my spirit some um, there's been some discouragement and in, in Jesus name. Uh, I speak, I, I want to see your faces. Um, I speak to that discouragement right now to leave you and for God to manifest his hope in your life in the name of jesus that he brings us hope and he brings us peace and that's what he is bringing to you right now if you will receive it god is bringing you that hope right now Amen. in jesus name Amen. there is hope for the future Amen. there is hope for your family there is hope for your bodies there is hope for your finances there is hope for your schooling. There is hope in Jesus name. So grab hold of the hope. And, and I believe that it's, it says that it's the anchor to your soul. Amen. 